everybody. This tutorial is about how to make thick paint runny. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a canvas here. I've added a layer and I filled the layer with color and I used um, effects, apply surface texture and used paper. And I'm just using this nubby laid paper to create this paper look. I want to keep the canvas clear for this technique. It needs to be completely empty. Okay, so I've selected heavy texture palette knife and it works with sampling multiple colors. So I'm going to get this kind of blue, green, and blue. Now I want to have uh, its textured brush. So I want to change my paper to something with more texture. And I'm going to this horizontal chaos. And if I paint, then you can see that I can paint with this thick, thick paint and get some interesting texture as well. I'm going to switch to a combination of this blues here, I mean uh, purples, and put a little of that in here as well, just for fun. Okay, now it's time to make the paint run. So I've got to do a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do is copy the thick paint layer. Now you can't go and right click on it and duplicate the layer, but you can go Control C or Command C for the Mac and Control V or Command V for a PC and you will get an identical thick paint layer that is still thick paint. Now what I want to do is come here and drop that layer to the canvas layer. Once you drop it to the canvas layer, you can come up to layers and down to lift canvas to watercolor layer. When I click that, it lifts the canvas up here to a watercolor layer, makes it a gel layer. And now I'm going to grab it and just drag it down underneath my thick paint layer that I'd copied. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the thick paint layer visibility eye so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to switch to a, excuse me, I just hit my microphone. Sorry about that. I'm going to switch to watercolor and to the wetting agent. Now I need to change some things about the wetting agent. I'm going to go to my general tab and change circular to watercolor bristle spray. I'm going to make sure that the subcategory is grainy wet abrasive. I'm going to close that panel and open up the water panel. And I'm going to change the wetness slider to 100%. I'm going to change pickup to 4% and dry rate to 5%. I'm going to change the diffuse amount to 80. And I will change the cap factor to 0 0.080. Okay, I'm going to leave everything else the same, including accurate diffusion being unchecked and delayed diffusion being unchecked. Now, if your computer's slow, this may slow the brush down. So if it does slow it down, just click on def delayed diffusion and use it that way. I'm going to close that and come over to my um, opacity panel our opacity slider and I'm going to change opacity to 15%. I'm going to also change my feature to 2.7%. Now, since you've done all this, you might want to go ahead and go up to brushes and simply save the variant with a new name and then you'll have it anytime you need it. I call mine turpentine. Okay, now this particular watercolor brush will also work with multiple, sample multiple colors just like the thick paint brush 
does. So I'm going to sample that blue. Now I want to pick a paper. Now I can use the horizontal chaos if I want. I want some sort of rough paper that will give me a kind of drippy look. Now one thing that I need to do though is I want to make sure that the contrast is all the way up because you want to be sure that the black that the the paper is as close to black and white as you can get it now if i'm using horizontal chaos this is what i would get and i would just keep kind of pulling and see it sort of stops there if i come down further you'll see that it continues to run but that doesn't really look enough like a, a run for me. So what I want to do is find another paper. What I actually did was create my own. I made a paper that looks kind of like that. It's just a bunch of little raindrops. But you can make any number of papers that look any number of ways and get different looks. Again, make sure that you're using it at 400% uh, contrast. Now when I start doing this, you'll see that it will flow much better and has a little bit more of a kind of runny look to it. Not perfect, but certainly better than what we had, right? So I'm going to go over here and grab some of the purple and I'm going to let it run right through here, right through the blue. Remember, it picks up a little color, so it's going to pick up some of the blue. Just like that. Now, if you, you might want to dry the watercolor layer in between uh, in between the different brush strokes. And here we go with another one. Okay, there we go. We've got runny paint um, going on this particular layer. Now, this was a watercolor layer, so this is gel, and it kind of looks a little different. But if you kept your thick layer paint, you can open it back up, and now you have that thick layer still looking the right way. It doesn't look quite right the way it's running through this stuff. So what I do then is I add a layer mask. And then I come up to my brushes and I go to airbrush and I usually use the digital airbrush and I uh, take its opacity up to 100%. Then I'm going to select black and I'm going to make sure that I'm on the black, on the uh, layer mask. But before I do that, I'm going to come over here and click on the layer itself and reduce the opacity a little bit so that I can kind of see where my runs are going. Okay, then I go back over to the thick paint layer. And with it set to black, black conceals what's on the layer and white reveals. So all I'm doing here is just concealing a little bit of this thick paint that was on this layer. Uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get rid of that blue right there and let the, it's like the paint just kind of ran right through it. All right, at this point, let's see, I need to probably do a little bit here and a little bit there. And at this point, I would go back to my regular layer and increase the opacity, go back to the layer mask and do any extra that I might think 
I need to do. Now also, at this point, if there's something, you know, I don't want it to be harsh, so I might come up and get a lighter color, white conceals, and just with a light pressure kind of go over this just to bring a little of the paint back so it's not quite a harsh line. And I think I kind of like that coming over the top like that. Okay, so that would finish making a runny layer. Now, the neat thing is I still have a thick paint layer here. So I have not changed that at all. I can go back to my thick paint and using that uh, heavy loaded, uh, heavy textured palette knife, I can come back and add more to this image. I can even come down and cover up some of what I did. Like that. So it's very versatile and you can get a look. It really, the, the look of, ha of how much this looks like running paint really depends on your paper. So if you'll take some time and make some papers, you'll get a very realistic, runny kind of look to your thick oils. Hope this helped. Bye-bye. Thank you.